Hey guys, it's Amber from NotableInc.com and I'm so, so excited to be on the Alta New Hop this time around because it has been so hard not to share any news about this release. This is the Alta New Metallic Watercolor Pan Set. So we're gonna be creating five backgrounds today and five cards with those backgrounds. These are gonna be really easy watercolor backgrounds that you're gonna get to see how I create them so that you can do them on your own as well. And really the reason I decided to do backgrounds versus paint their stamps is because I really wanted to play with the watercolors and see what they do. So here's the packaging here, which is just stunning. And then we'll go ahead and open it up and it's, it is kind of like a schminky case um, if you're familiar with those watercolors. So it folds open and you have a couple of different areas with wells to mix your colors. You can see that I've already had a play with it and I have the Alta New um, water brush there. And so look how gorgeous these are. They are stunning. The colors that they've chosen are absolutely beautiful and just the shimmer that they have is it i love it so here i have their 36 watercolor pan set and i wanted to show these to you just so that you get an idea of the size difference between the full pan and the half pan and we're going to go ahead and get started so for all of my panels i'm going to use my favorite watercolor paper which is the saunders waterford high white rough paper it performs beautifully, the colors move magnificently on them, and it really is a bright white, which I love for card making. So I'm gonna start off with my most solid background here because again, I just wanted to see what these colors looked like on paper and what they do. The first color I put down was rose quartz, and I'm gonna go ahead and dry this layer. So. I used a Pinterest photo for inspiration, so I will have the link to that um, in my blog. Anytime I use anything as a reference, I'll have it linked in my blog, so I'll be sure to have that there for you guys to see. And I am laying down sterling silver now, which I know is hard for you to see, but you can kind of see it there in the light when I tilt it up. And I have forgotten to dry that layer and I've come straight in with enchanted gold underneath that. I'll realize after a couple layers that I have forgotten to dry it. Now the reason I wanted to dry it is because I wanted a sharp border in between these different layers of color. I didn't want them to blend together. And so here I'm putting in citrine for the next layer. So above that was enchanted gold, sterling silver, and at the top was rose quartz. And so I'm just gonna add in this layer and I think it's about at this point that I realize, okay, I need to dry this. I am using, I believe that's a 12. I think that's my number 12 round silver brush there that I'm using. And you can just see how pretty these go down. So next I'm gonna start using one of the purples. This is Rhodolite and for this one, I'm gonna mix it together. I end up changing this color by the end of the card. So as I was putting down this color and the blue that's gonna go next, I was looking more at that Pinterest um, inspiration and kind of matching the colors there. And I decided I didn't like that. So I end up going back to a muted color in the end, but I will, um, I mix a couple colors together here and then here I have some of the, what is the blue called? The blue is topaz. So I'm mixing topaz with some of the rhodolite and just to dull it down just a little bit. I've sped this up some so we can get to the next card, but for my last color, I'm gonna use garnet, which is the one in the top left. And then after this panel is completely dry, I actually go in with a whole nother layer because right now they're still a little transparent and I wanted this card to be extra vibrant. So I went in with a second layer after it was dried and so you'll see the finished card looks a little more opaque. And so for our next card, I decided I wanted to do some chevrons. So I've just divided my card panel in half and then I'm drawing some lines here and then I'm drawing some diagonal lines so that I have a guide to go by. 
Now, I don't want it to be perfect. I don't want my painted lines to be perfect, but if I don't have a guide, it is gonna get all kinds of wonky. So after I drew these lines, I knew that I needed to at least erase the majority. There I'm just showing you how all of the shimmer just looks amazing in the water. It, I just think it's so cool. I could watch those little pigments move all day long. It's kind of like the alcohol pearls, same kind of thing. So it's really important to erase as much of your pencil lines as possible for anything that the paint is going to go over. I wanted to keep a little bit of white space in between my painted lines here. And so I didn't erase much of the diagonal chevron lines that we have, but I did erase the majority of the center line and then the lines that went straight across. Um, but I think I could have erased even more because you will see with the finished card, some of those pencil lines do get trapped underneath the paint. So do be sure to take care to erase as much as you can. So I'm doing a repeating pattern of four colors. I have enchanted gold, rose quartz, praseolite, and bronze. And I got confused with my pattern, so I went ahead and pulled them out and put them in the correct order. And you can see I've left some space in between those lines to keep it kind of funky. So we'll move on to our next card. And for this one, I'm just gonna do some circles on there and I'm gonna use the same color since I have them out. And I'm gonna do different sized circles. I do want to overlap some of them. So you'll see I'll do a few of them and then I'll let it completely dry. I'm also going to vary the amount of pigment that I use. So in, for some of the circles, I'll water it down a little bit so that it's the same color but a little bit more muted. So now I'm going to start overlapping some of my circles and I don't want those colors to mix or start to get fuzzy edges. So you just wanna make sure that you completely dry your panel before you start overlapping your circles. And this is a wet on dry technique and I believe I did wet on dry technique for all of them. I also think it's funny, I'm just now realizing that none of my circles go off the page, which is really weird, but you know, I guess that's just how I was doing it. So here I'm gonna add some splatter with the bronze. I think that color is gorgeous and that might be my favorite color out of all the ones in the palette. And so here I decided to just do an ombre, a really simple ombre card. And again, I am going, I think I started off, this was a wet on wet actually, I think. I think I added just a little bit of water to the paper and you can see I'm adding water to the paper to get it to run down the page. And I'm gonna add some greater intensity at the top and then start to bring it down. Now this fades to white. Um, once it dries back, it's a little harder to see the pigment, especially in the photos and on the video because my lights are so bright. Um, but it fades to white maybe a little bit sooner than I would have liked. I wish I had brought the darker pigments a little further down the page, but still really pretty. So here I'm gonna go ahead and completely dry it, and I decided I wanted to put a pattern on top of this. So I still had my half pan set out, so I grabbed Industrial Diamond from that set, and this is just slightly opaque. It's not a completely transparent, um, paint and so I'm just going to use so this is a number 10 round brush from the silver brush company and I'm just using the shape of the brush to add an alternating pattern here and so I'm kind of lifting up at the end to get that cool I don't know it's like a double line at the end almost like a scoop and I'll just continue that and so about by the fourth row, I realized that my gray also needed to get lighter for the gradient to make sense and for that ombre to make sense. These little hash marks that I'm making also need to get lighter as I go up the page and then darker at the bottom. So there's, I really enjoyed making those little hash marks. So I decided to do that again on this panel and I have my watercolor panel lined up with the grid on my silicone mat. This is an Altenew silicone mat so that I can kind of use that as a guide. I didn't want to do the pencil route again and I wanted to still keep this kind of loose. But so I'm just eyeballing where that grid line is behind 
the card panel and I'm just coming down and offsetting these. And I will mess up so you'll get to see that. And what's nice about that is you get to see how nicely these paints lift if you do make a mistake. So let's see, I think we'll see it, you'll see it at the top. So the color that I'm using here is bronze. So I'm just gonna add, so right there is where I make the mistake. And of course it's like full pigment. So I just take a microfiber cloth and take up the excess and then I'm just wetting it and I'm gonna lift that off with a tissue. And then I smeared the whole thing because my paint's not dry yet. So again, it lifts off really easy so that wasn't a problem at all. And I'm just gonna do that one more time and then we'll add in that last mark. And then I went ahead and dried this panel because I wanna come back in and add a second stroke with a smaller paintbrush. So this is a number four round brush and I'm using the Proselyte color and I'm just gonna add a second shorter and more narrow line right next to that which adds just a little something extra. I felt like it was way too plain with just the one mark and this I feel like added just enough of a different color and enough texture that it made it more interesting. And that is it, that is our last panel. So once those were completely dry, we'll go through them. So you can see that dried back quite a bit. So I haven't added the second layer yet. Here's our circles with our splatter. There's our funky chevrons, which I think turned out really nicely. And there's our ombre background panel. And then we're back. So, and here's our last one. That one is still wet, so I didn't want to pick it up. So I'll go ahead and do some more erasing of lines here and see if I can get off as much as I can in between those chevrons. But what's underneath the paint is trapped. So just be aware of that. And you can see all the pretty shimmer on there. I just think that they're gorgeous. I die cut all to A2 size, and then I also added that second layer of color to this card so you can see that the paint is more opaque. This looked like one of those mountain and silhouette inspirational posters to me, so I matched my sentiments to go along with that. Those sentiments are from Sentiment Strips, and I did the strips to go along with the shape of the watercolors that we used. This one, the hello sentiment, it's a simply hello die and I used a shimmer paper but you really can't see the shimmer in that paper. It's, it's a lot more pretty in person and for whatever reason I couldn't photograph that one very well. But I love how the chevrons turned out and I just added some sequins to that. For the circle one, I used the Rosie Posy mini stamp set. There's that great hello sentiment from there and I added some white Nouveau drops to that to just reinforce that circle theme. And I love how much white space is left over on this particular panel. I thought it came out really pretty. For this one, I did add the Fantasy Floral 3D, three dimensional die cuts to this in some coordinating cardstocks. And I think it's just beautiful. I love just the simplicity of the background with the two lines. I think it really turned out nicely. They kind of reminded me of candles. So that's why I went with a birthday theme. And then for the ombre card, I added the signature words die, thanks, and then a sentiment strip, you are all kinds of wonderful from the sentiment strip stamp set. I really love how that one turned out as well. And again, you can see more of that ombre in person. So here are the five cards together. I hope that you enjoyed these projects today. I had such a blast playing with these paints. I absolutely think they're beautiful. And I do like how they mix with other regular paints as well. So they coordinate really well with the 36 pan set and I'm sure any other watercolors that you may have. I have not used them yet with the watercolor brush markers, but I'm sure that they work beautifully with those as well. I hope that you continue on in the hop. We have a giveaway going on, so be sure to leave comments on both my blog and my crafty friends blog so that you're in for a chance to win a gift certificate to shop Alta New. If you enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button down below, hit the bell button if you wanna be notified of new inspiration. And as always, supplies are listed below. Thank you so much for joining me today 
and I'll see you next time.